In this video, we're going to take a look at relative positioning. And we have examined pretty much every type of positioning so far, except for relative. So we'll go over that in this video. Now to understand relative positioning, we also need to talk about static positioning and absolute positioning as well. Now we've already talked about absolute positioning and we've already talked about static. Now you may say, wait a minute, when did you talk about static positioning? I haven't heard of that term yet. Well, we have talked about it. It's the default positioning the browser sets for an element. And so it means it's in the flow and we've talked all about the flow. So static is the flow. So we already know what that's all about. And right now, if you take a look at the web page, all of these elements, the body, the div, the paragraph elements, this div, and its paragraph elements are all in the flow. By default, they are all static because I have not specified that they are relative. I have not specified an absolute position. So by default, everything is in the flow, and that's a good thing. Now, just to emphasize that point, let's go ahead and put in a position, a static position for this square down here. And you're gonna see that it doesn't move. So we'll do that over here, and we'll just put in static. Let's go ahead and save this. Let's refresh our page. And you can see it didn't move because it already was in static. That's the default. So we're not accomplishing anything by doing this. So let's go ahead and remove that and save this. Now, relative and absolute positioning are pretty much the same thing. They use the same properties, a top, a bottom, a left, and a right. And same thing for absolute, top, bottom, left, right. And you will remember when we did the absolute positioning, when we put a pixel count here, so if we say 10 pixels from the top, it'll move it down 10 pixels from the top. If we said 10 pixels from the left, it'll move it 10 pixels from the left. Now, the way this works, you rarely will use all four of these properties. You will either specify a top or bottom and a left or right, but not all four. So you'll pick one top or bottom, and then you'll pick one left or right. So for instance, for relative, which we're gonna start out first, we'll take a top and a left, we'll specify that. And so let's do that now. So I created an ID for the square. So let's go ahead and update that here. And I'll just copy and paste this in here. So that's what we're doing. We're, we're gonna put in a position of relative and we're gonna say five pixels from the top and five pixels from the left. And let's go ahead and put that in for our paragraph right here, our red paragraph here, because I created an ID for that fourth paragraph. So let's go ahead and copy and paste the same parameters, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and save this. Let's refresh this. And there you can see it moved a little bit. Ah, uh, but actually this pixel thing got lopped off in my copy and paste, so let's go ahead and put that in here. And we'll save this again, sorry about that. And we'll refresh this, and there you can see. Now, the way relative positioning works, and here's the key point, position determined by first static element it touches. So in this case, so let's take a look first at the paragraph, and it's actually the same thing for the square. Both of these ran into the first static element, which was this paragraph on the top. So it is five pixels down from the edge of this paragraph static element, okay, that's in the flow. And it's also five pixels from the left of the div, which is a static element, right? Our main one, we haven't put any positions in here. So this is by default static. So again, it hits this paragraph static element, and then on the left, it hits the div. And so that's relative positioning. It's relative to the static elements around it. And so that's the big difference between relative and absolute. Read this statement right here position determined by first non-static element. So what does that really mean? Absolute will pay absolutely no attention to any static element. So it will ignore all of these paragraphs and even the divs themselves because they are static. It will only render against the browser window actually because everything is static. It won't even pay attention to the body because the body is by default static. And to emphasize that point, let's switch this to absolute. Now we're just gonna play around with the square now. So let's get rid of the position parameter for our paragraph. Let's save this and keep an eye on the square. We're just gonna switch this to absolute. And we're gonna save this. We're keeping the same properties. So let's go ahead and refresh this and boom, look at that. It's now rendering up against the browser window. That's because like I said, all of the elements within our page are static, so it won't pay attention to anything in our HTML document. It will render right up against the browser window. It has to stop somewhere, and that's where it stopped. 
And to emphasize that, let's actually switch this around. Let's actually switch the top and let's say the bottom and let's switch this to right. And let's go ahead and save this. We'll refresh our page again. And now it's rendered down on the bottom right side of the browser. And again, it paid no attention to any of our div or paragraph elements because they are all static. Now you might ask the question, well, how do I get this absolute positioned element to stay within this div element tag? How do I get it to stay inside here? And there is a specific way to do that. And it actually involves using relative. And the way we do that is we actually have to create a position in here for relative. So let's do that. We'll just copy and paste this in here. And again, we're working against our main two element and we'll switch this to relative. We'll hit save. Now when I hit refresh, this square now should go over to this divs bottom right. So if we hit refresh, boom, there it goes. Because now take a look. This main two now is no longer static. It's non-static because we switched it to relative. So now this square can no longer escape the div because it ran into its first non-static element. And that stopped it. Now, if you take a look here in our main two div, we didn't even have to put any properties. We only had to turn it into a non-static element and that stopped the square from moving outside our div. So again, it's not really using relative. It's actually acting more like a static. We just flipped it to non-static by using this position, but we didn't put any properties in here. So it's really acting more like a static element, even though it isn't. <laughs> I guess that's the best way to describe it. So that's one of the ways you can use relative and that's actually one of the big ways you can use relative positioning. Now let's switch this paragraph again back to relative. So we'll do that and let's actually do another top and we'll put in a left and let's save this. We'll hit refresh. Whoops, nope, sorry, we wanted this relative and I copy and pasted absolute. Okay, let's save this again. And there you can see the paragraph now has moved five pixels from this static element and from the left, five pixels from the div element. Now, usually you will not use relative positioning in your main content panels. That's just not the way you're going to do this. Because if you take a look, this looks kind of weird, right? These three paragraphs look much better because they are in the flow. Now, if you wanted to align these with this paragraph, you'd have to use relative positioning on the rest of these. And that's just not a good way to do your website. So I only use relative positioning for a few different scenarios. One of them is what I just showed you, where we need to set something at an absolute position within your main content panel, and you need to keep it within that content panel. Then you will set the div to relative just to make it non-static, and that will keep the absolute position element inside your div. So that's really one of the primary ways you use relative. You actually won't use it to move around content in your main content panels. But there are a couple scenarios where you will use it for smaller panels, such as your navigation bar, where you need to nudge something. And so I'll show you that right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close all these out and I'll pull up a nav bar to show you how it's used in a smaller panel. Okay, so here I have a horizontal menu in a navigation bar. And like I said, relative positioning is good to use if you have to do things very small. You don't want to use it out in your large content panels, but you can use it for smaller purposes, like I said, inside your nav bar where you have to nudge something a little bit. And I'm going to show you an example of that right now. Now, this is a horizontal menu. Don't worry about this right now. Um, we'll be talking about this in a few videos, but for now I want to show you how I'm using relative positioning with this horizontal menu. Now you can see I've specified it right here and we're using this against the hover. Remember the hover is when you hover over a link and you can format certain things. In this case, we're just setting a background to black, but you will notice here that there's a little green right here at the bottom. You can see that, can't you see that? So it hasn't completely covered the area and that's where relative positioning is nice to use. So we just need to alter this a little bit. So if you take a look again, there's a little bit of green here and we wanna nudge this down a little bit more. And uh, by the way, you can use minus values for the top, bottom and left, right properties. And I'll explain why I'm using a minus value uh, when we do horizontal menus. But again, we want to nudge that down a little bit. So 0.5 didn't really work. Let's set this to 0.3 and let's save this and let's refresh this. 
And now you can see it pretty much covers the entire area. So again, that's what you will use relative for, to nudge things just in the smallest little way. We wouldn't want to set this to absolute because then it wouldn't respect any of the static elements around it. So again, that's why we want to use relative here rather than absolute positioning. Okay, that is a good start on relative positioning. I will see you guys in the next video.